Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. It's a wonderful event that is actually connecting all of the ASEAN countries together uh, between different countries um, outside of Glasgow and also the pavilion in Glasgow. So today, ASEAN Peatland Pavilion is on the sidelines of the UNFCCC COP26. And this is day one of, uh, uh, sorry, day two of a three days event um, that is co-hosted by the ASEAN uh, and the European Union. Um, and we will have uh, six wonderful speakers representing Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, also the, the government of Thailand, Laos, PDR, and the ASEAN. Secretariat um, conveying all of the messaging to you why peatland is actually very important in terms of combating global climate change and it's a key ecosystem to contribute towards climate change mitigation. Now, we invite all of the audience uh, that are participating today to be uh, open to an interactive session. So you can later on put all of your questions in and also interact with the speakers. I promise you this will, go, uh, this will be an exciting ride. My name is Gita Syahrani. I am the head of the Secretariat for Lingkar Temu Kabupaten Lestari or the Sustainable Districts Association, and I will be your moderator for today's session. Now, to begin our session, we will uh, welcome two of the co-host of today's session, we have the Head of Environment Division from the ASEAN Secretariat, Dr. Fong Sok. And we will also have um, Thibaut Portevin, Head of the Cooperation from the EU Delegation to ASEAN. Welcome, gentlemen. So um, without further ado, uh, we will welcome Dr. Fong Sok to give his opening remarks, followed by Mr. Thibault afterwards. Go ahead, uh, gentlemen, the time and floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Jita, for your uh, moderation uh, today, uh, important session of the uh, side event of the COP26. Um, uh, Mr. Thibault, uh, Potvin, the head of cooperation of EU delegation to ASEAN, esteemed representative and eminent speaker from Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Laos, PDO, and Thailand, distinguished representative department, uh, uh, development partner, ASEAN University, and also ASEAN Pitland program, participant, ladies and gentlemen. A good morning to all of you participating in Glasgow in Europe, and also good afternoon for those who participate from ASEAN region and, and part of the world. Welcome to ASEAN Pitland uh, Partner Sai event at the Pitland Pavilion at the UNHCC. This important event is a part of two day Sai event entitled Important of ASEAN Pitland in contributing to the global climate change mitigation, organized by us. Uh, mentioned by Jita, the ASEAN Pitland partner with the support of the European Union, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, in collaboration with the United Nations Environment Global Pitland Initiative as the main organizer of Pitland Pavilion. I wish to extend my appreciation to all ASEAN Pitland partner for their continued support to our region. My gratitude also extend to ASEAN member states for their commitment and active contribution to global climate agenda through various actions at very scale, local, national, regional, on climate change mitigation and adaptation. And in particularly in the implementation of the uh, ASEAN Agreement on Transboundary Haze Pollution, the roadmap on the ASEAN cooperation toward transboundary haze pollution control with amino implementation, and the implementation of ASEAN peatland management strategy for sustainable peatland in the region. As some of you have noted that ASEAN, I mean, the Southeast Asian region, I mean, tropical pit will estimate to be uh, 1,352 cubic gigameter, or about 77% of global tropical pit volume and the uh, region pit carbon pool is estimated as a 68.5 gigaton representative, uh, representing on the um, 11 to 14% of the global pit Carbon. The annual clearance using the fire not only create a thick blanket of haze, covers 3 million uh, square kilometer of Southeast Asia, affected over 50 million people, and also contribute 1.3 to 3.1 of the current global CO2 emission from the fossil fuel combustion. 
the phenomenon has been increasing in intensive uh, intensity over the last 10 years, uh, particular in 2015-2016 during the annual uh, event. 100,000 premature death and massive GAG emission, large scale deforestation and dras dramatic economic loss. I mean, over 16 mil billion uh, um, uh, in Indonesia alone were experienced. I mean, the impact of climate change is real. We have all experienced in different way, in different form. Significantly natural disaster in the region are over 70% associated with climate related disaster. And also glo global, globally search five for over 50 years. The region is experiencing a rise of sea level faster than elsewhere with 1.9 of uh, one, um, 19 to uh, 19 of the 25 city more exposed to a one meter sea level rise in ASEAN and seven of these cities are in the Philippines. On the other hand, of the spectrum, the Southeast Asian region is predicted to be experiencing more severe and prolonged drought. The severity of drought during the 2015-2020 exceed anything recorded in the past two decades. The disaster, its time and se severity are evident of climate impact in our region. ASEAN plays climate change high uh, on the agenda and all ASEAN member states are the contracting party of the UNHCRC and Paris Agreement. Climate change is also one of the main priority of ASEAN under ASEAN chairmanship of Brunei Jerusalem this year. Brunei Jerusalem is leading this year in developing the ASEAN joint statement on climate change to the UNHCRC COP26 and also established the ASEAN Center for ASEAN uh, uh, for climate change and launch the ASEAN Youth Climate Advisory Program to further strengthen climate action and cooperation in the region. In the last decade, ASEAN member states have shown its commitment in effort to achieve in NDC by reducing national emission and adapt to uh, impact of the climate change. All MAS have officially submitted their NDC in reducing the GHG emission to the UNHCRC Secretariat between late 2020 and early 2021, the six AMS have already updated their NDC target. The remaining country, on the other hand, have reported a recent initiative to improve local climate adaptation and mitigation effort. By that, AMS is firmly committed to renew its ambition to reduce GAG emission on average in the region from under 20% to over 30% by 2030. ASEAN working intensively on peatland issue for community, local livelihood and economic growth, especially to prevent the transboundary haze issue. Peatland is one of the main cause of transboundary haze in the region and also contribute important to the climate change. For ASEAN peatland are important to help stabilize climate, um, regulate ecosystem, protect biodiversity and play an integral part of the carbon cycle. ASEAN member states working together to manage sustainably their peatland. With seven member states have already complete the development and implement national action plan on peatland, and the main industry are still undertaking the uh, inventory of the peatland area. The important peatland is enormous. Their potential for delivering TLC, nature-based solution, have not been fully realized, especially in the contribution to the NDC. To realize that ASEAN is also working closely with partner, uh, with the ASEAN Pitland partner, and consists of particularly, I mean, for now, we have IUCN, GIZWRI, TO, uh, TOCOC, GEC, C4, and so on, to combat the Pitland um, fire and haze pollution by fostering Pitland management in. ASEAN region in partnership with the Global Environment Facility, EU, and the IFA. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are hearing the lesson learned, the success from both South and Northern region of ASEAN member states on contributing of the peatland restoration and, and management to the NDC from Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Laos, and the Philippines, and also the result of a recent complete final review of ASEAN peatland management strategy.
Tomorrow we will hear more about partnership and collaboration from various ASEAN PIT and partner projects sharing innovative technology, novel approaches, as well as mechanism for sustainable peatland management. This project will support ASEAN endeavor in combating transboundary hair pollution, peatland fire, support the objective as in peatland strategy through collective action, enhance cooperation and improve sustainable peatland management mitigation impact climate change, manage risk of fire, of, of fire and reduce transboundary haze in the region as well as the estimate of the uh, investment program 1.5 billion focus on haze uh, elimination and sustainable peatland management. I hope today and tomorrow event will give the opportunity to share a successful uh, example of peatland restoration and policy from our region together with ongoing discussion and negotiation at the COP26 about the peatland contribution to NDC. We believe strongly this is a great opportunity for us to optimize of the peatland and the way how we can manage with that, we can put forward action to enhance our global, regional, national effort toward climate change, individually, collectively. I look forward to a successful event. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Vong, for the opening remarks. And uh, we will now invite uh, Mr. Kivo to also provide an opening remarks from the European Union perspective. The time and floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you as well, uh, Dr. Hongsok, for your uh, remarks. I'm very happy to join you uh, in the opening of this event. Also very pleased to see the, the participation of uh, many partners, uh, government representatives from Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand, and Lao PDR in this webinar, whom I welcome, uh, as well as all the friends of the pitlands who are connected today. So this event is on the importance of ASEAN peatlands in contributing to global climate change mitigation. And I think it's very easy to understand why uh, the protection of peatlands is indeed crucial. I think Dr. Gonsok, you already uh, touched upon this, but let me add a few uh, comments here as well. Peatlands are the most efficient natural carbon sink on the planet. They cover only about 3% of global land area, but they hold around 30% of the Earth's soil organic carbon. Peatlands inhale carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. If left undisturbed, they store more carbon dioxide than all other vegetation types on Earth combined. This said, uh, when they are drained and deforested, uh, they release nearly 6% of global carbon dioxide emissions each year. As the linkages between climate change and biodiversity are increasingly understood, uh, I also want to stress that tropical peatlands are a unique ecosystem. Besides carbon storage, they preserve water supplies, they regulate and reduce flood damage, provide fish, timber, and other resources for local communities. They also host globally threatened and endemic flora and fauna. As the international community just concluded negotiations on biodiversity with the Kunming Declaration, and as climate negotiations are underway, we must direct our attention to the situation of peatlands. It's great that there is a pavilion on peatlands, specifically at COP26, and I'm glad that partners such as the ASEAN play an important role in it. Let's zoom in on the region. The total peatland area in ASEAN is estimated at 23 million hectares, 6% of global peat resources, and 40% of the world tropical peatlands. Over 90% of ASEAN peatlands are located in Indonesia and Malaysia. Despite their environmental and socioeconomic importance, peatlands in Southeast Asia are among the most oh, highly hey, threatened. Uh, uh, Go ahead, Pat. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, despite the environmental and socioeconomic importance, peatlands in Southeast Asia are among the most highly threatened of all forests and wetlands according, uh, globally, according to Wetlands International. Vast areas of peat forest have been cleared, burnt, and drained for economic development, and few peatlands in the region remain intact. As the mobilization of climate finance is a key objective of COP26, I'm glad to say that the EU contributes financially to efforts to protect peatlands in Southeast Asia, notably through a 20 million euros contribution under the sustainable use of peatland and haze mitigation project in ASEAN called SUPA. 
The project is part of our cooperation with the ASEAN, which has been elevated to a strategic partnership in 2020. Sustainable development is a priority of this partnership, and the super project is a great illustration of it. It contributes to our common objectives on climate change by supporting ASEAN level institutions, but also supporting concrete actions on the ground, notably in Indonesia and Malaysia, where 90% of peatlands in the region are located. At regional level, for example, the project has allocated 1 million euros to the establishment of the ASEAN Coordinating Center for Transboundary Haze Pollution Control, which is based in Indonesia. At national level, SUPA has a strong focus on the implementation of national action plans and the generation of successful pilot experiences in peatland conservation and integrated management, contributing in particular to maintain biodiversity, to reduce greenhouse gases emissions, and to support livelihoods of populations within or around peatland areas. And this work and today's activities tailor to the different situation of ASEAN countries, legal support, technical guidance, peatland inventories, training activities, for instance. So all this work and basically transforming the way we see peatlands is challenging. Several economic sectors and many operators benefit from peatlands conservation, notably to develop plantations. But conversion also has high economic costs, which are often unaccounted for, such as reduced provision of ecosystem services and access to resources such as fish, timber, and other resources for communities. It's necessary to take into account all benefits and costs to allow the sustainable management and protection of peatlands. Ensuring the sustainable management of peatlands and prevent their conversion may see major challenges, but the message from scientists at COP26 is very clear. We need to accelerate global action to respond to climate change. I'm glad that the EU can contribute to it and encourage all partners today to pursue and to scale up our, our cooperation. So I thank you for your attention and I wish ourselves a very successful webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it's wonderful to hear from Dr. Vong as well as from Thibault how peatland become such an important priority, not only for ASEAN countries and its leadership. Um, Dr. Fong mentioned about the joint statement that it's currently preparing also for the COP26, um, but it's also um, an important theme for um, the European Union. And to see this coming together, um, it's a wonderful opportunity. So thank you so much, gentlemen, for the opening remarks. And we will soon begin the first uh, session of the panel. And we will have representatives from um, Malaysia, the Philippines, as well as Indonesia that's joining both virtually but also live from Glasgow. Uh, we will now uh, say hello to the ones that are in our virtual screen first. Uh, we have the Senior Director of Forest Management Division, F DPM and GEF6 SMPEM project director, Dato Dr. Muhammad Puat Dahalan. Uh, good afternoon Hi. in Malaysia. Hi. From Malaysia. Yeah. Hello, um, great to have you here. And we also have uh, representing the Philippines uh, virtually, also the chief of caves, wetlands, and other ecosystems division, Mr. Anson Tagtag. Good Hello, afternoon. Hello, Tika, to our participants. Hello. Hello, um, great to have you here as well. And we will be soon joined uh, by uh, the representative from the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, uh, the Director of Peatland Degradation Control, uh, Ms. Uh, Budi Susanti. I understand that she is right now walking to the pavilion, just finished the PCR um, uh, swab test in the pavilion. So without further ado, uh, the speakers will share 30 minutes um, uh, between them um, and all of you participants um, can actually put in your question and um, in the right hand side of the virtual um, ecosystem that is different than us in Zoom. So make sure that you put in your uh, question there and I will have a separate screen uh, that is screening all of the questions and answers and we will begin to discuss them after the end of the panel too. Without further ado, uh, we will give the first um, 10 minutes uh, to the government of Malaysia. So that Dr. Muhammad Puat Dahalan, the time and floor is yours. I will remind you when there's one minute left. Thank you. 
Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, uh, from here, good afternoon uh, from Malaysia. Good afternoon and salam sejahtera. And I made to understand that uh, in uh, uh, Glasgow, still in, uh, in morning. Okay. Uh, so first uh, of all, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to convey our sincere appreciation and gratitude to the organizer, MAFSA, for the invitation. Uh, for us to participate in this uh, important occasion, that is uh, ASEAN uh, Pitland uh, Partners Virtual Pitland Pavilion Site Event. Uh, importance of ASEAN Pitland in contributing to global climate change mitigation. So my presentation will highlight uh, on the sustainable management of pitland landscape in Malaysia, well, of course with special preference to Peninsular Malaysia and uh, as a nature-based uh, solution. So however, uh, uh, I will continue with, uh, this is the outline of my presentation, starting from an uh, overview of the forest resources uh, in, in uh, Malaysia, laws and regulation, then followed by major types of forest in peninsular Malaysia, functions of a pit uh, swamp forest, management of pitland landscape, and of course, uh, issues and challenges. Next. So uh, as of uh, 2018, the total forested area in uh, Malaysia was estimated to be around 18.27 million hectares or equivalent to 55.31% of the total land area. So of this, uh, it is estimated that some 10.92 million hectares uh, are the forest reserve with the remaining 4.04 and 3.31 million hectares uh, being state land, forest, and uh, protected forest, respectively. So this uh, represents the nation's will and commitment uh, to conserve and uh, sustainably manage our forest, uh, its, flor its flora and also fauna. So this is to show that uh, we, Malaysia, actually exceeding initial commitment made uh, in the Rio Earth Summit 1992, way back 1992, uh, to maintain at least 50% of our uh, land mass under forest cover. Next, please. Okay, just to share a little bit uh, uh, our uniqueness in uh, Malaysia. Uh, under the Malaysian uh, Constitution, Article 70, 74, bracket 2, forestry actually comes under the jurisdiction of the uh, respective state government. Uh, as such, each state is empowered to their own law on forestry and uh, to formulate forestry policy independently. The executive uh, authority of the federal government only extends to the provision of uh, advice and technical assistance to the states, training and conduct of research, and as, as also at the same time uh, carry out uh, demonstrations. Uh, I mean, uh, demonstration plots and experiment uh, and, and not the experimental. So, according to Article 1991 uh, bracket five of federal constitution. The functions of the National Land Council, NLC, are to formulate uh, from time to time a national policy for the promotion uh, and control of, uh, of the utilization of land throughout Federation for mining, agriculture, forestry, or any other purpose, and also for the administration of any laws relating to that too. And uh, the federal and state government shall follow the policy so formulated. So talking about uh, major types of forests in Peninsular Malaysia, all right? So the slide uh, shows the distribution and extent of forest areas by major forest type uh, in uh, Peninsular Malaysia. So it's estimated that some 4.47 million hectares are the inland diptrocarp forest, with the remaining 0 0.25 and 0 0.09 million hectares being pit swamp uh, forest and also mangrove forest, uh, respectively. So, as we all are uh, aware that pit swamp forest plays uh, various uh, and also vital functions such as uh, maintaining water balance. Uh, of course, uh, pit swamp forest uh, uh, hold or can contain more than 90% of water in the soil or in the, in the pit. So the water storage function helps in maintaining uh, water level and act as a flood control uh, for the communities at the downstream, uh, uh, especially at the uh, downstream level, uh, level. 
So biodiversity conservation. So uh, talking about uh, biodiversity conservation, Pitsong Forest provide support for biological diversity and provide food resources as well, uh, water and habitats to plants and uh, mammals and uh, other aquatic uh, life also. And then uh, we're talking about climate, the, the roles uh, on climate and carbon storage, which is very important. We are the UNFCC uh, uh, Triple C now, which is uh, on COP26 now, is talking about. So healthy pit uh, swamp forests can collect or actively storing carbon, balancing cert, uh, le uh, certain, uh, I mean, a certain amount of carbon, uh, carbon emission from uh, for fossil fuel. So, and then uh, we come to the livelihood. Uh, communities uh, living close to the area of uh, pit or pit, uh, pit strong forest often benefit from yields and uh, ecosystem services being provided. Then uh, research and education is one of the full wonders of nature with the uniqueness of the flora and fauna. Pit swamp ecosystem be able to record changes in vegetation and also vegetation and climate within the pit soil layer. So actually, this uh, can uh, help in understanding uh, peatland ecosystem changes uh, uh, during a period of a uh, long period of time. And then uh, talking about uh, recreation and uh, ecotourism, uh, okay, peat swamp forests have a big potential now to be promoted uh, as an area of uh, recreational activities such as uh, fishing, uh, track, uh, forest trekking, and ecotourism as well. Uh, and ecotourism can be uh, can contribute to the economy of the locals. Actually, it's very important with the development and uh, basic facilities. And this will increase uh, the numbers of uh, visiting, uh, I mean, uh, or the visitors. So, talking about management of pitland landscape. So this uh, presentation also will discuss and highlight uh, management and uh, conservation activities over the of the years in uh, managing pit swamp forests, especially in combating uh, pit fire by the uh, Forestry Department, Peninsula Malaysia. So the National Action Plan of uh, Pitland (NAPP) was finalized and adopted by the Malaysian Cabinet in January 2012, 2011. And it has been translated into our national uh, language, Bahasa Malaysia, and disseminated to various uh, government agencies for the implementation. So status and progress of NAPP implementation was reviewed in November 2013 by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, then uh, uh, now known as uh, Ministry of Energy and uh, Natural Resources. So NAPP actually is one of the most important documents uh, in, uh, in, 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 in a way to sustainably managing pitland uh, in the ASEAN member state. So actually most of the ASEAN member state also have worked out their own NAPPs and uh, now most of them already in use. So updating and operationalization of uh, natural, currently NAPP will be one of the main activities in the sustainable management of pitland ecosystem in Malaysia, SMPEM. So, now, further efforts on uh, managing and conserving of pit swamp forest in Peninsula Malaysia was supported through uh, the allocation the, uh, under the Malaysian Development Plan, that is under the 10th Malaysian Plan, il, uh, 11th Malaysian Plan, and as well as under the current 12th Malaysian Plan. So this is to show that how serious uh, the government of Malaysia uh, in uh, placing uh, the effort, uh, the commitment on uh, managing of the uh, pitland or pit swamp forest. So under the budget approved, a total of uh, uh, two reservoirs and 3.8 kilometer of uh, access road, uh, three kilometer of high density pro polyethylene pipe and eight tube wells was constructed to ensure that the water level within the pit swamp uh, forest remain at uh, its optimum level. So, and then uh, of course, on the other hand, a number of check dams and uh, also wash tower, uh, two of them actually, wash tower, and more than five uh, kilometer fire breaks uh, constructed uh, at a strategic area, uh, just uh, using the same allocation in order to prevent uh, or to, uh, uh, to prevent from the uh, forest fire, occurrence of fire, forest fire. 
Although various efforts has been taken by the Forestry Department Peninsular Malaysia in uh, managing and conserving our peatland, uh, our peat swamp forest, we are still facing several issues and challenges. Okay, uh, forest, actually forest fire remains a big, big threat, even though areas affected decreasing uh, compared to uh, previous years. So this just to show that uh, the positive effect of our peatland or peat swamp forest management in our country is uh, actually working very well indeed. Then uh, we have a rapid uh, development in land uh, near, to the, uh, near to the urban areas, putting pressure on the acquisition of land for other, I mean, uh, pit, pit, pit swamp land uh, for other non-forestry and uh, land use purposes. However, due to the high commitment uh, at the federal and state government, uh, I mean, uh, high, uh, federal at the state level, uh, allow us uh, actually to maintain the extent of the pit land, uh, pit land or pit swamp forest as what we, we are uh, having it now. So, uh, on the other hand, pit swamp forest also plays an important role uh, for indigenous and local communities livelihood in terms of uh, of course, cultural and uh, subsistence uh, activities, rehabilitation and restoration of degraded and uh, burned uh, pit swamp forests are actually ongoing uh, and needs uh, cooperation from various stakeholders to ensure that uh, successful, uh, to ensure this uh, successful uh, in terms of uh, our, uh, our initiative. So despite these issues and challenges, the department are always uh, uh, committed uh, and uh, always on a positive mode, and we will continue our uh, efforts uh, in managing and conserving uh, our precious uh, treasures. Our that is a pit swamp forest. And with that, our uh, Madam uh, Chair or Moderator, uh, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Muhammad, and we will be listening from uh, your side as well during the discussion session. There are several questions that uh, is already in the panel as well um, in terms of what we just shared about the issues and the challenges. Um, now we will listen uh, from Malaysia, we will listen uh, to examples from the Philippines. Uh, we will invite um, Mr. Anson Tak Tak as well for the next 10 minutes um, and uh, for him to also share the experience of Philippines um, and the lessons learned. Um, if you have any questions for Mr. Anson, uh, feel free to again use the yes. chat box. Go ahead, Mr. Anson, the time and floor is yours. Thank you, Gita, and uh, uh, good afternoon or good, good morning to our uh, uh, listeners. And thank you for this opportunity to share um, community-based management initiatives in the Philippines. And as you can see, um, the management of peatlands in the Philippines is still in its infancy. In fact, um, it only started in 2005 after our participation in the uh, development of the ASEAN peatland management strategy in Malaysia. And at the time, there was no study nor documentation of any peatland in the country. And so after that workshop, we started locating peatlands in uh, Agusan Mars through the help of the ASEAN Secretariat and the Global Environment Center of Malaysia. We started consultation uh, with uh, the communities by showing uh, photos of peatlands in its description. So based on the technical uh, information provided, we asked if there are areas in the marsh that fit the description of a peatland. And uh, true enough, uh, we confirmed that indeed we have peatland uh, areas in the Philippines. And with that, uh, we initiated uh, the, the process for the development of a national action plan in peatlands. Um, in, in the process also, we came to learn uh, about other peatlands in, in the Philippines. And so um, in the process of consultation also, several issues in charge in this uh, were identified uh, uh, on Philippine wetlands uh, even before they are uh, fully documented or assessed. Uh, one is that uh, the pitlands are already in a certain degree of degradation because of the lack of you know, awareness on what our pitlands are. There is a lack of uh, technical uh, capacity and equipment for uh, in-depth assessment of suspected uh, pitlands in the country. And apparently there is also a need for coordinated mechanism and clear national policy. And uh, importantly, 
uh, many communities uh, are dependent on pitlands, and so alternative and sustainable livelihood for, commuting, for communities are very much uh, needed intervention. And, uh, and so our national action plan on pitlands uh, is focused on, or the highlight is on awareness raising and uh, capacity building at the national and uh, local levels. We also targeted protection as well as restoration of degraded pitlands, setting up appropriate institutional framework and uh, development of sustainable use strategies which favored local livelihoods in the pitlands. And through the implementation of uh, the National Action Plan, the identification of pitlands has been pursued. And currently, we have uh, 24 um, identified pitlands around the country with an estimated area of 20,000 hectares. Some of these are already assessed and confirmed, while others still need further assessment. As you can see, it may not be uh, globally uh, uh, substantial compared to the pitlands of Malaysia and Indonesia, but still, it is important for the country uh, considering the mitigation of carbon emissions that we need uh, to achieve also. The first two known and documented pitlands in the country are the latest sub pitland and the pitland in Agusan Marsh, which is the focus of this presentation. So let me zero in on the two pitlands for current interventions being made. The latest sub pitland was originally a uh, 3,000 uh, hectare area. But in the 1970s and to 1980s, the area was intended to be transformed into a prime commercial agricultural production area to be a so-called a full basket for the province. The area was then distributed to a number of beneficiaries. Some of the pitlands were drained and planted to a variety of crops such as sorghum, maize, rice, and others. A lack of knowledge about the nature of pitlands in much more the needed agricultural technology to to farm in peatlands led to poor yield and the plants for the area were altogether um, abandoned. Now the disturbed peatlands are uh, now threatened to be converted to other types of land uses. So now um, only about 1,200 hectares of the sub up peatland remained unutilized and intact. Uh, you can see in the screen uh, some photos of the remaining intact um, uh, peatlands in sub up in the, in the abandoned area and also the constructed canals for the supposed agricultural activities. Uh, meanwhile, in the Agusan Mars uh, in mainland Mindanao, uh, the condition of peatlands there is uh, relatively more encouraging and it's documented to hold the largest area of peatlands in the Philippines, estimated at 15,000 hectares. Some of these are shown in the photos. Um, as you can see, there is some degree of disturbance, uh, clearing and burning due to agricultural activities. But in other parts like the Kaimpugan forest, um, the, the Kaimpugan pit swamp forest is still intact. It is documented to be the only remaining unknown intact pit swamp forest in the Philippines based on the study conducted in 2012. It is estimated to store 22.9 tons, million tons of carbon within its 5,487 uh, hectares area. The pit dome with the highest stored carbon of 6,200 6, uh, uh, tons carbon per hectare was found to be a substantial in space. Hi, Pa Anson. Um, I think your voice is breaking up a bit. Um, is it in just my connection or it, um can, yeah, I think he's breaking up a bit. Can you still hear us, Pansan? I think you're back. Okay, let, let us try again. Um, I think you're still on mute. Okay, sorry, I lost connection. And I no, no worries. My, 
Can, you, can Iris share again? Yeah, um, you were explaining about the community forest examples as well. Okay, um, let me share again. Okay, I was talking about, yeah, the beginning to discuss the management initiatives that we're doing in two of the important peatlands in the Philippines. And I was saying that uh, because communities are using uh, peatlands, we need to engage them. And uh, we started by raising awareness, the promoting of sustainable agricultural practices compatible with the peatland conservation, and also uh, working with communities um, on rehabilitation using native species. And I'm glad to share also that um, some of uh, our local uh, local uh, counterparts or partners have uh, uh, benefited from the uh, peer learning activities in other ASEAN countries like Indonesia and Thailand, where in, uh, after these peer learning activities, they were able to replicate or modify what we have learned in this study tool. Like as you can see in the picture, the surgeon farming in which they learned in Thailand and uh, empowering local communities in peatland management also involved their direct participation in integrating peatland conservation in community land use planning uh, in other ecotourism planning workshops and uh, restoration and rehabilitation planning exercises. And so, um, in other activities include also uh, interventions on livelihood for both Agusan and in Lady Sabah communities. There are uh, emerging livelihoods, uh, which in a way contributes to local resiliency of those dependent on peatlands, for example, Water hyacinth used to be a problem in Agusan Mars, but now the local communities are gathering these hyacinths and turning them into handicrafts, slippers, charcoals, bouquet, charcoal bouquet, and other useful products that we can sell. The provisioning role of peatland is also appreciated by communities by harnessing the potential of native uh, trees abundant in the Agusan Mars for producing food products such as jams, cookies, and uh, would you believe pasta noodles? At the present, however, we are still assisting the communities on how to improve the products in terms of branding and uh, marketing. And um, other, another biodiversity uh, friendly livelihood that we are uh, employing in the area is the use of uh, uh, what we call the tikog. It's a uh, siege uh, found abundant in Agusan Mars for um, uh, uh, producing mats in other um, uh, handicrafts. Right, um, right, and uh, we, we also started our uh, public, uh, private public partnership in our effort to uh, find a sustainability mechanism in terms of financing. Uh, we have initiated our first public private partnership with the PLTT Group, uh, the biggest uh, telecom merchants company in the Philippines, and linking with their objective on carbon neutrality by 2030. We have designed a project for them uh, with uh, uh, the, the help of the communities. And the, the project has three major objectives, uh, support to protection, conservation, and restoration, support to SEPA, and also support to peatland-friendly inter enterprises. And on the part of the department, uh, we shall be providing certification on the annual uh, protected uh, uh, peatlands as a result of the partnership. The, the latest of a peatland forest restoration initiative is another Pitland Partnership Project. This time it is led by NGO. Uh, this project is funded by the Forest Foundation Philippines and um, um, implemented through the International Institute of Rural Reconstruction. One of the highlights of this partnership is the project uh, consortium. The consortium is composed of various government agencies, uh, NGOs in the acronym, where members of the consortium provide technical assistance to the communities and uh, they integrate uh, protection mechanisms for the peatland forest in their work program. So through, the, through this project, the communities were able to pilot the practice of diversified farming. Some of uh, these include rice farming with free range ducks, the organic vegetable gardening and fruit tree based dispersal project, including fish farming diversification. Hi, Mr. Anson. I think we lost you again. Um, okay. 
I think the voice is breaking up a bit. Um, I think we lost connection, uh, but no problem. Uh, we will get Mr. Anson to join the discussion se uh, session after this. Um, we are going to now stream live directly from Glasgow. We have one of the speakers that is physically there, uh, representing the government of Indonesia, Ms. SPM Budi Susanti or Ibu Ati, the Director uh, for Peatland Degradation Control from the Ministry of Environment and Forestry from Indonesia. And she will be sharing about the implementation of National Peatland Strategy for the year of 2020 until 2049, so the long-term goal for Indonesia in terms of protecting their peat. Ibu Ati, the time and floor is yours. I will give you a cue when there's one minute left. Thank you, Ibu. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are right now. My name is PM Budi Susanti, the director for Pitland Control, uh, Pitland De Degradation Control uh, from the Ministry of Environment and forestry in Indonesia. So uh, this is my pleasure to be here to share the achievement of what we have done so far in Indonesia because uh, we already know that uh, Indonesia has the uh, biggest uh, pit, tropical peatland in the world and the fourth uh, biggest uh, peatland uh, in the world. Uh, so uh, we have uh, about 24.6 uh, million hectares and uh, currently what we already achieved in uh, peatland restoration at about uh, 3.6 million hectares uh, conducted uh, by the uh, concession holders about 246 uh, sorry 249 concession holders uh, divided into 70 for the uh, forest uh, plantation and also 224 uh, for the uh, palm oil plantation so from the restoration uh, area, we already have more than 10,800 uh, uh, stations for water level monitoring in the uh, pitland uh, in concession holder. With this regard, uh, we uh, continue uh, monitor the level of uh, water in the pitland as a part of rewetting uh, process as a part also of uh, the uh, restoration in the pitland ecosystem in Indonesia. In line with that, we already achieved also about uh, 46,000 hectares uh, from the community area uh, that government of Indonesia established the uh, Desa Mandiri Peduli Gambut, what we call in Bahasa Desa Mandiri Peduli Gambut, or PIT uh, Self uh, Independent uh, Community in the Village, so they can enroll or they can participate uh, directly uh, in the peatland protection and management. Uh, the component of Desa Mandiri Peduli Gambut that we conduct uh, in the community area uh, consists of three components. The first one is reweighting, and the second one is uh, rehabilitation and revegetation. It is to improve the land cover area in the community area in the pitland ecosystem. And also the last one uh, uh, regard is also improve the community livelihood. Why it is important? Because we have to able to encourage community with the pitland area, with the uh, surrounded uh, pitland area, so that they can uh, directly uh, uh, involve, directly participate in the pitland protection and management in Indonesia. In uh, what we call and we uh, encourage and also uh, and we uh, implementing the restoration and also pitland protection management we also support uh, by a gef5 uh, uh, with the implementing agency uh, effort 
and we will share story about the success story of the SMBAI project that conducted uh, in Indonesia with the three components. Sorry. So this is the sustainable management of peatland uh, ecosystem in Indonesia. Uh, the uh, executing agency is director for the peatland degradation control and the implementing agency is uh, IFAT and uh, the grant, uh, the amount of grant, the total of grant uh, in the session of 5 of GEF at about uh, 4.7 and the total uh, government uh, co-funding co at about 14.95 uh, million and the duration of the project is uh, four years uh, from uh, 17 July 2017 until uh, the closing of the project at uh, 2022. 20, uh, so this is the location of the project and also the goal of the sustainable peatland management is to uh, secure carbon stock and also conserve biodiversity while improving the living uh, standard of the local community. Uh, this is the, comp uh, the, the component of the uh, project divided into three components that I already mentioned before. The first one is the internal national uh, uh, framework to enhance the implementation of government regulation number 71 uh, 2017 uh, junto government regulation number 70 uh, 57 uh, 2016 and also there are consist three uh, uh, output and uh, the component two is regarding uh, developing the infrastructure and also uh, to demonstrate the emission uh, reduction uh, of the greenhouse gas. Uh. And the third one is functioning multi-stakeholder partnership established to integrated sustainable management. This is the uh, community-based activity uh, which is consists of true component uh, of output. This is the structure of the project. Uh, we will work closely with the local uh, local government and also local community supported also by the PMO. And this is the outcome that we already achieved. A lot of uh, uh, outcome uh, that we uh, able to achieve with the support of GEF5, the SMPEI. This is the first outcome for the first uh, component. Uh, there are 10 additional regulation we also develop the information system and uh, the database regarding to the uh, sustainable uh, water level uh, management in the uh, concession holders and also in the community area and this is the uh, achievement of the component two and the uh, achievement of the component three and this is the uh, system that, the, that the, or we already developed, we call uh, CIMATAC uh, minus 0 0.4 um, m, m min meters. This is uh, the requirement to meet the water level in the pitland ecosystem. And uh, this CIMATAC is already launched by the Ministry of Environment and Forestry in, uh, in Seoul, Korea, uh, when we have the Asian Pacific of Forest. This is uh, the information provided in the CIMATAC, not only for water level uh, monitoring, but also several uh, other information. And this system already integrated with uh, the uh, satellite imagery. So it is uh, easier for us uh, to cross check whether the data from the field is correct or fabricated. Uh, and then if yes, we will uh, 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 require uh, for the uh, uh, concession holder or uh, sometime you have to give the administration sanction for them and this is the uh, detail of this matak uh, from the concession holders and uh, the corner in the uh, left side this is me showing the uh, point of uh, the uh, water level monitoring station and also uh, canal blocking that we already uh, developed in the area uh, in the concession holders and the data spread it from the Aceh uh, until into, into uh, Papua and this is the system 
the upper uh, system of the Simatak, uh, we already uh, currently on progress to develop uh, the information system for protection and management of Indonesia uh, peatland ecosystem. It is supported also by GEF uh, 5, uh, the SMPEI. We will uh, provide uh, with the system, uh, provide the information regarding on the peatland quality index and peatland water level monitoring. Also, the early warning uh, system, the FDRS, uh, water balance, and other related, uh, of course, uh, the main, uh, the, the, the important thing is uh, we also provide the calculation of greenhouse gas emission reduction. And uh, this is uh, the area of the uh, project in the component three, uh, the community-based activities. We have 14 uh, villages that we develop what we call the Samandiri Peduli Gambut. The first one in the Indragiri Hilir district, and then uh, the second Indragiri Hulu, uh, and the third is the Pelelawan. So basically, in there are in three. Uh, districts. This is uh, the uh, beneficiary uh, that we already got. So the canal blocking in that uh, metric, uh, we uh, we uh, develop every years, not all, but every year. So in the uh, in four years, we multiply into four. And uh, this is the uh, beneficiary also uh, from the community that uh, we, uh, the uh, MTR review already uh, survey uh, regarding to the success story of the uh, SMBEI. This is the uh, 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 facilitator training and this is the improvement of water uh, level management the canal blocking uh, and this is the community uh, improved community livelihood uh, the result and uh, uh, this is most of all <laughs> Papa Isal Paris thank you for the uh, result of the review this is uh, very uh, amazing for us also even we already work hard but finally we got the satisfactory thank you for Papa Pak Faisal Paris and so Miss Serena is support us and sometimes remind us to uh, consistent to keep uh, the high level uh, achievement. So thank you very much for the time and sharing for the information regarding on what we have done so far in the peatland protection and management in Indonesia, and we invite state uh, uh, another college state to join with us together. Uh, to get uh, uh, more beneficiary, global beneficiary from the peatland protection and management. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ibu Ati. The last slide sort of represents the entire scheme is by protecting or managing the peat, you will be welcome with smiles. Mengelola gambut disambut dengan senyum. Let's give a virtual round of applause for all of the panelists um, for the first session, sharing the lessons learned, uh, success, and also progress in peatland management from Indonesia, Malaysia, as well as the Philippines. Uh, right now, we're moving forward to the second part of the panel. Uh, we will listen uh, to representative from Thailand, from Laos, as well as from the ASEAN Secretariat. I will first invite all of the panelists um, to the stage. Um, so let us welcome Assistant Professor Dr. Kobsak Wan Tong Chai, the Dean of the Faculty of Forestry in the Kaset, Kaset Strat University in Thailand. So welcome. Uh, glad to have you here. Um, and also, uh, welcome to Mr. Kone, uh, Kone Savant Lorang, the Director of Environment Promotion Division, Department of Environment, Ministry of Natural Resource and um, Environment, Lao PDR. Um, I think we also have the speakers online. Um, let me just check quickly. Hello, Mr. Um, Kone Savant, can you hear us? Okay. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, I can hello. Hear you. Yes. Um, is it possible to turn on your video, possibly? Just to say hi to everyone. Hi, sir. Happy to have you here. 
And we will uh, again listen also um, from the ASEAN Secretariat. We have Dr. Vong Sok also representing the, the Secretariat. Again, the second panel will be another 30 minutes um, and we will have the gentlemen share uh, 10 minutes each. And we will begin from the experience of Thailand. So Professor, the time and floor is yours. I will remind you when there's one minute left. Go ahead. Thank you. my side. Oh, I can I can yeah. unsee my slide moment. It's okay. Yeah. So while we uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's there. Uh, it's right. coming. Now right. we can see it. Yes. Okay. It's on the way. It's just a bit shy, I think. <laughs> now we can see it, I think. Yes. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, participants. So thank you very much for inviting me to join and share some experience on community-based peace management in Thailand. Uh, I think the, the peace forest area in upper ASEAN countries, I think in terms of area, you, we, we cannot compare to Indonesia or Malaysia or the Philippines. Right? Anyway, we have some experience to uh, sharing with you. Uh, I, I have been working for peat forest about 10 years, in particular in Quang peat forest. And last three years, we got the funding from the UNDP under the Global Environmental Fund to conduct the, the peat forest management program, namely maximizing carbon sink capacity and conserving biodiversity through sustainable conservation, restoration, and management of peat swamp forest projects. So that project main, mainly focus on how can we encourage the local people and national society to protect uh, peat forest. So today I, I will show some results of the project in relation to uh, community-based forest management. Uh, this photo just to show you the, how beautiful of the peace swarm forest area in Thailand. Right? So the, the project, the topic of my presentation today is about peat uh, forest status in Thailand and factors that affecting peat forest status, uh, Kreng landscape and local livelihood in relation to natural resource and uh, community-based management in practice in Kreng as a result of the project. So let me talk a little bit about the peat forest data in Thailand and the factor that affecting the stability of peat forest. From this map showing the peat forest in Thailand. So the largest peat forest in Thailand located in Southern Thailand, especially in Phuk Todang in the Latibat province, the southernmost of the country, and also in Quang Kring peat forest that I would, I, I would like to present today. So meat, uh, most of the peat forests are not primary forests. As you can see that about 86% uh, uh, secondary or disturbed peat forest, while only 14% is primary non-disturbed forest. The fact that uh, within those 86% uh, of secondary peat forest, there are only peel span of Mila Luka Kachikut grassland and, and water body. So this photo just to compare how different between primary and non and not, oh, oh, sorry, the primary and the secondary uh, disturbed forest. So more, moreover, those disturbed peace uh, forests are surrounded by local people who live and maintain their lives based on peace forest. That being the peat forest to be vulnerable by people activities, such as uh, illegal logging, land use change for oil palm, upper plantation settlement. So this activity come with water drainage out of the peat forest. And moreover, the climate variability, such as El Nino, uh, brought about burning in peat forest. So burning caused a lot of uh, biodiversity, biodiversity loss, in particular, destroy carbon sink and release carbon to the atmosphere. 
<clears throat> so this slide just to show you the how look for people rely on natural resource at hunting peat forest. Since somebody said that uh, peat forest is a food bank cupboard for them. So whenever they <clears throat> they're hungry or they need money, they just go to the peat forest nearby their house and collect food, especially fish. Sometimes they collect or water lily for sale. So the point is the peat forest is a surviving cupboard for local people. And local people rely on peat forest. Therefore, the local people have the right to manage peat forest for their security. Now I will show you on what the project that have been done by uh, our university under the UNDP uh, funded. As I mentioned that the, at the earlier that we have the project, namely maximizing carbon sink capacity and conserving biodiversity through sustainable conservation, restoration and management of peat from ecosystem projects, aiming to encourage the local community to protect Kwon uh, Keng peat forest. So the, the project uh, set up at Kwon Keng peat forest where, where the, the forest and the people they cannot be separate, they, work, they, they live together. Under this project, the analysis to understand the cost of peatland degradation showed that uh, Thai society, in particular the local people in there, still lacking of the continuous effort to raise awareness and understanding on the value and importance of peat swamp forests in relation to their role in carbon sequestration and global warming reduction alongside other benefits related to supporting the livelihood of the surrounding community. Also, we, we need appropriate and integrated guidelines and approach for conservation and restoration of peat swamp forests. And also we still lacking of the advanced technology on peat swamp forest management, in particular, uh, effective of forest fire management. So this map, and figures represent the land use at Kwon Keng Peat Forest, showing the land, land use type, such as forest cover, grassland, oil palm, and rubber plantation that are main land use in Kwon Keng Peat Forest. So by law of legislation, this area is under the non-hunting area and preservation area. So to achieve the sustainable conservation and restoration of Kwon Keng, peat swamp forest, there are four main challenges that the project must concern. These are community awareness and sense of ownership, people and knowledge, technology or prototype and cross-sectoral cooperation. Therefore, the project has set up three working models to solve the problem. The working model number one is increasing community awareness and capacity to conserve peat swamp forests, including data management, such as local use, uh, local land, land use survey, and local knowledge management. Promoting conservation among youth, such as training program, establishing a peat forest level youth club, building public awareness, such as media production campaign, integrated peat swamp local, uh, local curriculum, a uh, community forest management part participatory plan, enhancing people capacity, such as using our forest teacher to train the local people, and developing the incentive measures for balancing conservation and utilization, such as measures to support the use of biological resource, measure on funding, measure to ensure the right to the land for settlement and agriculture, and establishing local learning center. So the working number two, the working model number two, using the technological tool adapted to local community way of life for restoration of the peat swamp forest, including carbon monitoring volunteer done by local people community-based forest restoration, 
and implementing uh, the hydrological measure to prevent the forest fire and flood. So the technology were operated by our researchers and later we trained it to local people for further monitoring. The working model number three that we uh, developed is that the developing the strategic information for planning the conservation and restoration of peat swamp forest in Thailand. So this model has been done by collaboration between local people, local officers, national officers, and researchers from universities. A hundred of meetings both formal and informal uh, meeting have been done. So this uh, establishing working group to promote Kuan Keng peat swamp forest, developing inventory of Thailand peat swamp area, developing criteria and methods for assessment of the state function and services of peat swamp ecosystem, and developing a national strategy for peat swamp in Thailand. So last but not least, I would like to say that peat forest and local people cannot be separate. They need each other the same as similarity concept in uh, forest biology. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Also, um, interesting experience from Thailand. And for all those of you who have question for Professor Kobsak, you can still use the, the chat box um, function in your right hand side of your screen. We're already screening some wonderful questions that we'll get to discuss during the Q&A session with all of the panelists. Thank you again from Thailand. And now we will move to uh, Lao PDR and we will have uh, Mr. Kone Savan uh, that's joining us. So again, it's the same 10 minutes and I will remind you when there's one minute left. Simon, floor is yes. yours. Yes, okay. Uh, good morning and good evening. Uh, my name is Kon Sawangat from the uh, Department of Environmental and I will officiate for the, but not uh, Lily, uh, sorry. So the, uh, I think that's uh, a same thing for the, my presentation or not? Okay, um, so uh, the presentation uh, is somebody from the committee also has a presentation from Lao. We will check quickly. Uh, maybe okay. Bu Edwin, you can help. Yes, in a few minutes, uh, I'll uh, share the screen. Already, yeah. All right, so it's, it's coming um, in a few minutes. So uh, while we're waiting for so, you, Edwin. So, so, yeah. minutes, I try to... Yes. So it's, yeah, so it's okay. Now we can, we can see. Uh, so you maybe... can see my, so you yeah, can so... see my picture, okay. I think Bu Edwin is sharing it for you, so you can concentrate on the presentation. Go ahead, Pak. So the, the presentation is here, uh, Mr. Kone Stefan. It's okay. No, I, I, I try to see. But, yeah. Yeah, so. okay. Can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah okay, yes. So, so uh, first of all, I would like to explain to you because uh, for La PDR, for the fit land uh, management is for La is the uh, new things because uh, we. Uh, Really, we don't have the really for the what I see on the peatland management, but uh, we just to have for the uh, one project from the ASEAN and KMW for the wetland inventory in Bengkenu Lamsa side, but not yet begin. But uh, I try to uh, to uh, share with you for the uh, climate change adaptation in the land area in Lampia. It means that we have for the Keep land and conservation inside. Uh, next, how to? So I would like to my project, uh, cover project. I mean that climate change and adaptation in Latvia is the funding from the TIEP for the five year, and uh, we have the for the FAO and uh, Monterey DFPP for the lead to the uh, implementation of the project. But we have two uh, IUCN, IBRI, and uh, Tutakit for the technical support for us. And we have some um, province 
from the Palais is mean that the provincial of the national resource and development and through district, the national resource and and eleven town. And we have for the provincial of the agriculture and um, forestry. And we have to allow women union and the community to the join together for the implementation. The Vietnam side, we have two Lamsa side. At, uh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. We have two the Lamsa side, Sejam Port in Sumanake Provin and Bung Chet Mong, Jamasak Provin. The objective to reduce uh, the climate change, uh, vulnerability, and uh, community wetland uh, ecosystem of power, which they are power. The key challenge is the climate change is the increase of flood and down. With the loss due to the local and development issues, lack of the stable awareness and uh, wetland value. The wetland increase not in the climate change and adaptation and disaster uh, risk management value is increasing. The peatland forecast because the peatland is one part of the wetland landscape in the in the sites. Next. So we forecast uh, for the cover project that we forecast for the issue, the problem. The cover project work in the two wetland pilot in Sejampon and Bung Chet Mong in Lao PDR, the is a Lamsa site. And the uh, cover project focus on the climate change adaptation and uh, disaster uh, Risk management related wetland issue and a problem improving uh, improvement of the wetland livelihood and maintain of the wetland landscape function. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Next. So uh, uh, the cover peatland contact at the least level. Based on the cover five year implementation in Lampedia and has with the uh, FAO experience from the other country and listen learn on the peatland management. Uh, the peatland habitats, the peatland can be found in the both side in the second pond and Bung Chet Mong, Lamsa side, the clean other state, and uh, eventually by IUCN. The peatland one of the wetland nature habitat uh, contained within the wider wetland landscape. So the peatland are important uh, natural carbon storage under the climate change mitigation forecast of Lao PDR in BC, yet they are management and conservation for under the climate change adaptation program of Lao PDR in BC. The Pitland and uh, climate change and adaptation in wetland board request management of the total solar being wetland to maintain wetland function. The local community and uh, local government establish of the wide use practice within the natural wetland. The sustainable, profitable, low wetland uh, implementing climate change adapted. Uh, livelihood in the buffer zone and uh, figuring surrounding in the natural wetland. In conclusion on the wetland management and uh, conservation, the peatland conservation must be best. Surrounding wetland conservation, wetland conservation need to be best on the profitable, sustainable local community livelihood within the surrounding wetland. The challenge of the wetland function and peatland. To conserve peatland, wetland, and local livelihood, and ensure climate change adaptation, wetland function must be maintained. The wetland function is uh, based on a tree. Uh, sorry, energy interaction wetland component. The one, natural hydrology, is mean that the uh, natural flood pattern and pool. The second one, natural habitat to be managed on site and as interconnected site. The third one, the ecology based on the native uh, fish 
Bobonan and Mikration. The wetland hydrology is mean that flood is required to support wetland habitats, wetland hydrology and habitat are required to support wetland biodiversity, native fish stock and uh, movement and ecosystem function. Lafidia landscape in, uh, including stage of and and Minket Mong Lamsasai support various wetland type, artificial is a, uh, water storage and rice field and natural peatland and natural flat land habitats with different priority for management. Artificial wetland do not function well, flat and fish movement are excluded and not productive uh, ecosystem uh, expanding under development and are not uh, wetland management priority. The natural wetland to function. So I cause you to cover theory and uh, climate change, uh, climate change adapt adaptation disaster risk management and natural risk management action. Cover project, Ilavidia provide a pilot example of the wetland and peatland management through implementation of the trial of chain with the integrated and Caribbean climate change adaptation, disaster risk management and natural risk management action. Uh, we had for the military sector and military stakeholder approach. The main component of the approach commission, uh, commission, action, commission adaptation action to review disaster uh, risk management risk and wetland impact, providing options to local community for the first one, chief risk and uh, diversity livelihood option, and the second one, review wetland impact. Two, uh, encourage a uh, the chief from the high risk and high impact, for example, in the wet season, rye coping, fat plant, aquatic, to low risk, lower impact, uh, livelihood option. C, the list of the, the protection and restoration data collected. Uh, the, impo the improved of the wetland site for take natural resource and support data. You can, uh, we don't have two more the time. You, you can see in the website of the APO of the cover project. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for sharing the experience of okay. Lao PDR. Um, and I think we identify one common theme from throughout all of the speakers, both representing the Southern region as well as the Northern region, which is community becomes such a center uh, priority in terms of protecting the peat. So now we're going to listen from the ASEAN Secretariat, the Director of Environment, um, and Dr. Fong Sok um, is going to be uh, sharing with us the results of ASEAN peatland management strategy um, the, a review and also some ways forward um, and planning for the future. Go ahead, the time and floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, for your um, um, introduction. It's a great opportunity for me about the uh, ASEAN Pitland Management Strategy. I think it's uh, you have already learned about um, the, the view and the way forward also from the two countries that present and also uh, previous sessions on the also Malaysia and Indonesia. This provides an overall sort of uh, picture about ASEAN pitland management strategy 2006-2020 and the way forward, how we can do better in our region. Next, please. So with that, I would like to share four points with the uh, with this uh, ones about give you a glance about ASEAN cooperation on climate change. It's just quite quite, and then go to uh, what is uh, the main thing for us for our reform. It is ASEAN agreement on transforming high pollution, and then go to the ASEAN peatland management strategy and then learn and the way forward. Next, please. Next, please. So I think uh, ASEAN um, 
a cooperation on climate change, as you may have known. I mean, uh, ASEAN member states as a part of the contracting party of the United C and Paris Agreement, and also part of the SDG uh, commitment. So with that, we translate all this global commitment to ASEAN 20 ahead together, where we try to address all these sort of issue together with ASEAN vision. Next, please. So this to provide you a glimpse what ASEAN uh, 2025 vision include is about uh, the way forward that ASEAN uh, community building over the next 10 year. And this provide a roadmap for ASEAN to realize further consolidation, integration, and stronger cohesiveness as a community. And also that the way ASEAN community that can engage and benefit the people and it inclusive, sustainable, resilient, and dynamic. So with that, the, uh, the blueprint indicate clear the ASEAN Environment Corporation is a guide toward the realization of AACC vision 2025 and the environment in the face of social change and economic development through achieving the four key result area and 27 strategic measure as presented in the next slide. And uh, these are the four key result areas. You can see in the different color, green, which is about conservation, sustainable management, vital. Of course, Finland is supporting the thing is conservation, sustainable management, and uh, then environmental sustainability. And the third point is about the cross, about the sustainable climate change and sustainable consumption production, which is related as well from the standpoint of production base. And uh, with that, I mean, this is the way we strengthen regional cooperation on sustainable forest management in the context forest fire prevention, control, and including through the implementation of the ASEAN Agreement on Transparency uh, Pollution. Next, please. So, I mean, the ASEAN Agreement on Transparency has it caused by, you know, the way it born because of the seriety of forest and land and pitland fire happened to ASEAN region. There are 5 million of people across ASEAN region. A significant health, social, economic problem. Next, please. So then, in, um, that happened in 1998, but I mean, the problem is continuous. It's just a different sort of magnitude. And uh, with that, I mean, uh, with the support of that um, uh, UNEP, it's 11, among smoke uh, damage in the record history in that time. And that is a profound impact to environment and economy as well. And that is, uh, as a member state agreed to come together, sign this sort of agreement in June 2002 and come to enforce uh, three, ratified by all ASEAN member state 2015. So with that agreement, the objective is clear to prevent, to monitor, mitigate land and forest fire to control transboundary hay pollution through concerted national effort, regional and international cooperation. So this is about the multi-stakeholder engagement in order to address the issue. Next, please. In order to translate the ASEAN, ASEAN agreement on transboundary hay, the roadmap is one most important guide the implementation of that agreement. I mean, particularly on this roadmap on ASEAN cooperation toward transboundary haze pollution control with the mean of implementation that serve as a strategic framework for implementation of collaborative action to control transboundary uh, pollution in ASEAN region with the vision transboundary haze free ASEAN by 2020. Of course, uh, the goal here is just try to eliminate through intensifying collective action to prevent and control forest and land fire. Next, please. So in order to address and make achieve this sort of target, I mean, there are some of the guiding document to guide our implementation, the roadmap itself, the ASEAN Headland Management Strategy 2006-2020, and also ASEAN Program on Sustainable Management on Finland Ecosystem 2014-2020, which is also about the guide to implement some of the activity. Next, please. Yes, the key guiding document in terms of guidelines for implement uh, for the implementation of ASEAN policy to on zero burning, the pitland fire management, and also the ASEAN uh, standard operating procedure 
to guide how we can prevent, assess, and also monitor and also support in terms of the way we can cooperate together. Next, please. The guiding document may not be a national setting of ASEAN. It's a quite strong uh, with the consistent sort of response to the haze issue. The institutional framework here, you can see the two main color, uh, the yellow one, which is centerpiece of the puzzle, the ASEAN, um, the um, conference of the party, which is the minister level of um, land and forest fire related agency that come together to meet and discuss and provide policy direction. Under that, they have a committee under the COP, uh, which is the senior official of the um, responsible um, uh, agency of ASEAN member state taking care of this uh, technical level. And then we have specific ASEAN task force on peatland. That is the way we manage uh, specifically for the uh, peatland issue in the region. Purport, I mean the northern part of the region and the southern part of the region, which is uh, geographically and, and um, uh, climate, climatology uh, different from the two regions. I mean, the dry season it's, uh, and the wet season is different from one another. Next, please. Now, this is the way I would like to focus and share with, uh, with the meeting here. It's about ASEAN peatland management strategy. As some of you uh, have already known from my earth, the uh, peatland in ASEAN region, it's, it's significant. 60% of world tropical peatland are found in the Southeast Asian, cover estimate about 21 to 23, uh, 23 million hectares. Of course, the peatland provides great value, I mean, and benefit including water supply, storage, flood control, carbon sequestration, storage, ecotourism, biodiversity conservation, and so on and so on. Over 70% of total peatland in Southeast Asia, uh, in Indonesia, uh, as uh, uh, Ibu present early, and other major peatland are uh, found in also uh, Jerusalem, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. But I mean, the nature of uh, richness of the uh, peatland in the region is quite significant. Next, please. So instead of having, but also the region have uh, also challenge, I mean, expand and clearing of peatland for and other purposes, including drainage and so on, that is still an climate change and extreme drought lead to higher temperature, wasn't rising season with any no and uh, so on. That increased frequency fire, fire and fire contribute more greenhouse gas emission, loss of biodiversity and create transformative haste. Limit also on information and condition characteristic of the uh, peatland lead to misunderstanding in the direction of peatland management implementation on, on, on um, the practice, poor practice, sustainable management of the peatland. Next, please. So this uh, strategy uh, for your uh, uh, reference. Next slide. Next slide, please. This AP, APSMPE, that is to guide the project implementation. Next, please. Next, please due to the time constraint. This ASEAN peatland uh, management team that uh, ASEAN task force on peatland, that's the way to guide to manage and, and cooperate on the peatland in ASEAN region. And we have um, a yearly sort of meet issue on the peatland in the region. Next, please. So we have a number of project program that cooperate with partner and today is also some other partner with uh, the super one that also uh, present by uh, uh, highlight by Tibur, uh, Tibur from EU and also the MASA that is also Edwin will present uh, the next, following day. This is all the objective of that uh, MASA. Next. So I will not go all that detail because some of the project will share with you a uh, following day. Uh, so I just, this IUCN that is taking care of the peatland in the Mekong region. So I just focus on the peatland uh, APMA review. Next, please. So now lesson learned in the way forward. I mean, uh, just to provide you a good, important or APMS, ASEAN, manage, um, ASEAN peatland management strategy from the, uh, as, from the midterm review, confirm that it is really appropriate, relevant, effective, efficient. So uh, next, please. 
So it still has a lot of impact and sustainability. It's uh, it's it's there, but I, I need to do more. That's why I mean, from the master program approach, there are some uh, issue that we need to do more in terms of investment framework, ten year investment framework. And we believe this opportunity with the climate change uh, COP26 and the way that support from partner, this is the way we can develop something through this climate lens. We can improve the investment in the uh, in the pitland uh, from the climate sort of uh, uh, support. Next, please. I'll read that again. That is about uh, pitland to the cli and climate change. Next, please. Forward as priority, so we will, uh, ASEAN will develop the uh, a new ASEAN pitland management strategy and, and incorporate all these key priority. As uh, you can see here, uh, from from this review, one of the thing I would like to highlight in ASEAN region for uh, benefit uh, of this opportunity uh, in our region, the research and publication on pitland, the linkage of pitland and climate change, it's still very limited comparing to other areas. This one to highlight that we need more from pitland and climate change linkages. So the second thing I would like to highlight, uh, the successful completion of the way with climate change incorporate weather adaptation and mitigation, there's still, I mean, it's, uh, it's just 40% that from the assessment. So the lowest among other. So with that, I think uh, uh, this is a great opportunity to share with you all and hope that this is the way forward. We can look more on the opportunity, the uh, and uh, with that, uh, the investment framework can be streamlined in order to uh, support the implementation of the pitland to be successfully addressed, not only the haste, but also local livelihood and community. Thank you very much. The floor back to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong. And um, this last slide um, sort of encapsulate what we just discussed um, from all of this uh, previous speaker's experience. We have now time for one or two questions. We have wonderful questions um, that have been submitted to participants. So thank you so much for that. We've selected those that are uh, re receiving the most likes. So this is also crowdsourced um, and we see Ibu Ati is also prepping in the stage in Glasgow. So um, let us begin with the question number one. Um, so this is to all of you and maybe you can take a, a, um, a, a quick sentence to explain. Uh, what would be the most challenging experience that uh, you've done with our experience in the past in making peatland related climate commitment and especially relating your commitment to the national environment climate contribution so what is the most challenging experience that you've had in making sure that peatland become a priorities in your country ndc so probably we'll begin with um panel from uh panel from uh, the, the first session uh we have mr anson representing the philippines so um, maybe you have a sentence to give us an idea of what was the most challenging part of combining PIT into NDC of the, the Philippines. Right. Uh, thank you, Gita. Uh, yeah, indeed, um, the Philippines has submitted uh, an ambitious intention uh, as regards to its uh, in, um, nationally determined contribution. Um, uh, it intends to, our NDC says, 75% reduction in greenhouse gas emission by 2030. Uh, and, uh, but then meanwhile, we can say that pitland conservation in the Philippines uh, in ensuring that we contribute to climate change mitigation is, is still a, in a work in progress. But then um, right now there is a, uh, um, a great clamor in recognition that, you know, that the rate of pit destruction is approximately 10, time, 10 times the rate of its formation. All and so all means should be done in order to preserve the remaining carbon stock in our pitlands and the halt further degradation. And uh, should there, the anthropogenic disturbances not be addressed, yeah. these, these pitlands are vulnerable to become net carbon sources instead of becoming you know, carbon sinks and contributing to climate change mitigation. So these are some of the reasons why um, efforts, our efforts, mm. um, for pitland conservation in the Philippines have strategized on being 
community base and uh, will conti mm. continue, continue to do so in the future, yeah. including uh, policy reforms so that uh, peatland conservation is factored in in our climate change uh, targets. Thank you, uh, Mr. Anson. So connecting the dots between ecological function with community livelihood and welfare um, is one of the most challenging part. Um, maybe we can go next to uh, Malaysia. Uh, Dato' Muhammad, any experience in terms of challenge in contributing peatland into the NDC of Malaysia? All right, okay. Uh, from Malaysia, of course, uh, we have few actually uh, good experience, uh, but uh, worth to share. Lah was sharing. Okay, uh, in the late 1990s, uh, in the state of Selangor, in the state of Selangor, uh, which is very clear to Kuala, which is very near to Kuala Lumpur, actually, uh, we managed to uh, convert a, a large tract of uh, state land, uh, which is deteriorated, uh, to become a permanent forest reserve. Permanent forest reserve. Uh, the, the size of the area is more than 20,000 hectares. Okay, and then uh, from there on, we work very hard to convert the area, deteriorate the deteriorated area, uh, to form uh, into uh, 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 what we call the regenerated forest. And then, uh, of course, uh, from there, we are being awarded uh, with the uh, Queen Canopy Award uh, yeah. by the Buckingham uh, Palace, uh, by the Her Majesty Queen. So I think that is the most uh, uh, prominent and very yeah. experienced uh, uh, we have. And of course, we are going for more. Thank you. Thank you so much from Malaysia. We'll go to Glasgow next. And maybe Indonesia can also share Ibu Ati. What are the most challenging experience um, in terms of integrating PIT into NDC? And for Thailand, and um, Dr. Fong Sok, we'll save the last bit of the question for you. So go ahead, Ibu Ati. Yes, thank you very much for the question. Uh, the challenge of Indonesia land protection and management and its contribution to the uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction is the uh, improvement of water level management. Uh, why? Because uh, the increasing of water level, we can count the greenhouse gas emission reduction in terms of CO2 equivalent or uh, the uh, methane. And uh, why it is a challenge for Indonesia? Because uh, Indonesia have uh, 865 PHU, uh, pit hydrological unit. And in conducting the uh, improvement of pit, uh, water pit land, we, also, we have to work in integrated uh, under the PHU uh, for the water uh, governance and the other challenge because in each PHU is utilized by not the concession holders but also uh, by other utilization for example for the community and also uh, sometimes it is also the conservation area so yeah. all stakeholders have to be involved in the water level management in PHU uh, base. So this is the challenge and it is not easy for us to put it, them in the uh, one boat to improve uh, the water level to reweighting of the pitland in every uh, PHU. Thank you. Thank you so much for the succinct um, answer. And last but not least, the last uh, question, maybe one sentence uh, from each, uh, from Dr. Fong, as well as um, from Professor Kobzak from Thailand. Um, maybe one word that describes what is it um, that you would want to be prioritized in peatland conservation going forward? What is the common and agreed strategy that you want to pursue in terms of actually protecting peat and preventing fire. So those are the two um, questions that receive the most votes. So maybe um, a sentence or two from uh, Professor Kobsak, and then we'll finish up with Dr. Wong. Uh, could you please uh, repeat the, the, the question again? <laughs> so one common strategy that you think everybody should agree in terms of 
protecting peat and reducing fire. Mm. Oh, yes. Uh, I think fire is the very important thing for not only for peat forest but also every forest in 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 ASEAN region. Uh, I think the 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 very important thing that the people have to be you you have to um, acknowledge the yeah. the the law for wisdom or the mm. law for knowledge. You see, I think this is the point very important. I think it, many, many, many years ago, uh, we sometimes we, we just ignore the law for wisdom or law for knowledge. We try to push them away from, from the, the forest or from anything, it, including okay. forest fire. This is very important. I think we have to, to bring them in again and talk to them again. Yeah, this is a very, very important thing. Thank you so much from Thailand. And Dr. Vong, one common strategy that you think should be prioritized by, by us all. Thank you. I think, I think as uh, one of the most important I highlight early, lack of information about the linkages of the peatland and climate change, it's not well documented. And that need to do something in, a, in associated with limited sort of awareness. This is about the awareness in terms of how this climate change can contribute, as well as the way we can identify as opportunities. With that, my, I mean, we need to do more with the climate change and pitland. So, I mean, that is include the research and management from the climate change and uh, uh, pitland lands, because that's not been considered well at the early stage. Thank you so much for all of the panelists. And I think this is um, time is up. Unfortunately, we can uh, discuss for hours when it comes to actually prioritizing peat and climate change adaptation and mitigation strategy. We have another discussion tomorrow. But for now, let's give a round of applause for all of the panelists. Let me just summarize quickly with the word people. P stands for peatland is a global treasure, a priority for many from its historical biodiversity and ability to address climate crisis. The E stands for efforts to conserve peat ranged from water management all the way to community empowerment. The O stands for organizing collaborative actions, requires clear data, research, information, framework, and guidance. The P stands for Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Lao PDR, have highlighted how important community empowerment is. The L stands for local wisdom becomes a source of many know-how in terms of peat protection. And the E stands for ecological functions of peat actually determines the success of any economic scenario our country decides to pursue. With that, we thank you very much for your participation. Until the next session, my name is Gita Shahrani, our moderator, moderator for today. Thank you and have a nice evening, morning or afternoon. Thank you.